fantastic players, especially in the defense. Just completely tear them apart. Just the instinct and mess. The way he did was completely impressive. Now let's transition to the more intriguing group in this Euros tournament. Netherlands, France, Austria, and Poland's group. Netherlands played Poland's ultimately much harder game than they expected, but they ran out 2 1 winners. A very industrious, hard working performance from them in Poland as well. Especially without Robert Lewandowski. Impressive performance from them. Really, really hard, heartfelt, spirited performance from the Polish. So, quickly, cool, we are going to talk. I'm under Peter Fender, not named Virgil van Dyke from the Netherlands back line. That's Nathan Aki. A lot of people forget about Nathan Aki. He's kind of hidden in that rotation of uh, playmakers for Guardiola and Manchester City defense. But on the Netherlands, he's part of Virgil van Dyke. I feel it really allows him to show his ability as one of the better defenders in the world on his day. Two assists in this game just goes to show that he can push up the field, make progressive passes. Kind of sits kind of in like a number 10 role. He can really advance into midfield, cause havoc, play off the wing. Nathan Aki is a hugely versatile player, and especially for the Netherlands team that really struck to find its own identity in that game, where it kind of struggled to get shots off. Nathan Aki can be a very vital player for them. And then, in terms of the losing side, Poland, Piotr Zelensky. Whenever we talk about Poland's high in the generation, Robert Lewandowski saw the flowers. Piotr Zelensky should just be his man. He's a fantastic player, especially when his teammate Robert Lewandowski partner McCormick on the bench injured. Piotr Zelensky really took the play. One assist, opposite piece, so fantastic. There are two corners. So going forward, should Poland score more goals and more production in a very tough group than I really expect. Piotr Zelensky, one of those players who jumps into the line, like, kind of rounding out our segment here. Let's talk about the defending champions because we're going to talk about them later in the show. Let's talk about a guy who doesn't get enough love in my opinion, but I think one of the best centre backs in world football. Alessandro Bastoni. Three clearances, one goal for him in the comeback one of Rodney. They had to work. They had to fight as defending champions to get that win. But very important win in a tough, tough group for them. And Alessandro Bastoni, he was the heart of that defence. And he will be for years to come for Italy, and especially in this tournament, as he is an organised defensive transition from Kylian Bonucci era to a newer era where more players from other domestic Italian squads are integrated there. That's just about it for that set. I'm looking forward to the Italy segment at the end of the show. I think we'll talk more about the defense against Alessandro Bastoni. But that's just about it for Euro fantasy recap. I hope you guys enjoy. Coming next, we are going to stay in the fantasy basketball round a little bit. We're not abandoning it just because the finals are winding down. We're going to talk about potential risers and followers for the upcoming fantasy basketball season. Just to be interesting if you guys want to miss, especially if you're going to miss the NBA finals talk by Liverpool. We'll be right back to talk some fantasy basketball. Hello everyone, welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you as always the GSMC Sports Network. We are in the home stretch of the day show, and this next segment is definitely going to be an interesting one because we are sticking in the fantasy basketball realm as season winds down, and we are looking ahead a little bit early, still looking ahead to the upcoming fantasy basketball season. The questions arise, we're going to be some players that potentially rise up the rankings in terms of fantasy, and also some players who might fall, whether it be age, injury, what have you. It's going to be a very interesting weather. We'll pull up graphics here, and let's get right into this show. There we go. Now, there's been so many... Uh, Different stars that have been sending us the young, old. Let's talk with risers first because there's good players, or generally, other people, players from teams that are young and upcoming but already have a solid core they want to stick with, or players who are playing for worse teams but are in spotlight due to their sole output. I think these core group of players tell the story of how these still have guys who can come to be certain role players, and then you have guys who are actually be the next stars for these teams. So, I think it's for a duplicate right now. Sorry, not Vince He's just a very well known player, in my opinion, certainly not necessarily in the rotation of Grizzly players who are stars like John Morant, if he's important, gets his head in the game again. This is a game fantastic point of Jared Jackson. I think Vince Williams just hit him so well because of his fantasy. He's such a well rounded player, three point scoring, rebounding, seals, boxes, an incredible player who's not necessarily seen as a high level fantasy player, but a fantastic Philly option for next season. Potential top 100 prediction. So for Vince Williams, and I'm Vince squad that always wants to compete in a very crowded Western Conference just to get its core players in the court. Look for Vince Williams in the nine core minutes to really set up and level of production, whether only for a couple of minutes. Look for him as a nice little bench last year. Clinging in second, Jonathan Minga. Now, for all these Dominant Warriors ones, players who didn't get as much love as possible were the centers in this Warriors line and over the years, whether it be a guy like Julia Fisk Esley. We have Jonathan Kaminga definitely is flowers because he has seven designs. He has 16.3 points in his hands, 4.9 rebounds, 2.1 assists, 0.5 blocks, 0.7 assists, 53% shooting from four. So I think Jonathan Kaminga could be a nice little back center. Obviously, the Warriors might not go through them all the time. They'll have some cutting clay but they are at their age. And I do think that the Warriors, especially in a conference driven by big men, I think that Jonathan Kaminga can come to the spotlight a little bit. I don't necessarily think he's going to be one of the top centers in the league, but he can certainly be a guy who can step into a back row, especially fancy in the literature. And so look for him in your league to so really be a bright spot in your bench. So Jonathan Kaminga, get to know him, get to know him. And then, if they're out of some very, very weirdly constructed Chicago Bulls team, where you have players that say we're a competitive team, but combined age of them is a little bit worrying because of the fact that older stars and the Rose and Vooch and the younger stars and guys like Kawhi and Zach Levine, that I assume it was kind of like breaking them all. It's such a weird dynamic in Chicago, but I assume it plays you can see the level of town. It's a versatile, volatile player. The ups are high and the downs are low, but my sound is probably one of the better um, Chicago players. I think they hope they can build their feet around themselves, especially if they want to let go of guys like and the Marlowe's and the older guys are swapped. We'll talk about it later. But all season, he's had fantastic 17 points per game, 3.3 rushing, 4.9 assists per game. Obviously, in a barred heavy team, I assume we definitely should get more than he does. Chicago Bulls are definitely a very weird team. They don't necessarily have an offensive identity. I assume we can contribute that. And I really do think that in the future, maybe four or five years from now, I assume we'll be star in this league. I think that Chicago definitely wants to still contend in order to do that. They might to Rosen and Vooch this way to go, at least in the near future. But in a couple years down the line, you don't want to load off that weight somewhere else, and then I assume we'll come into the spot. So, why well, don't think 2024, 25 is the year that's going to be? He could definitely be a guy who you want to focus on a bit in terms of that aspect. And so, I really believe that he can reset up. In terms of another guy on a much worse team who really I feel like is. A Charlotte Hornets team that can compete, they just need all their help. Brandon Miller is certainly one of the players to watch there. A fantastic rookie campaign for him. While he wasn't necessarily looking everyone's eyes were on due to the fact that rookie class was so fantastic, he is one of those guys who was very streaky, but still was able to enter the monster. He had four games streak where he was already fantastic, 24 points, 6.5, 3.5 shots, but then there are moments where he's really absent. And so he can find the balance between his volatile moments and then his uh, uh, streaky moments, then I feel like Brandon Miller can control one of the players. He's in a setting where ultimately the Charlotte Hornets are the only players that they want to carry going to the future should they become playing team. And right now, Brandon Miller is going to have a very soon nice over the years. So I certainly feel that you know, he's one of those guys who I think really elevated him from his rookie season to a sophomore So look out for him. Now let's turn to from the good to the bad, the fathers in this kind of mindset here. I really believe that if these guys are just some former stars
shed those allegations of him declining. It, you know, the Chicago but no, the Bulls have actually, they're Asian, they've had injury histories, and so, look at that rotation and say, I don't see things are going to work, I don't see that this Chicago Bulls roster right now really fits the message of wanting to compete in these conferences, they're more and more loaded as the years come, and so look to fade those cool And then Chris Milton, as we see, he just have very long injuries, whether it be his ACL injuries, knee injuries, and ultimately, in this box squad that added Damian Lillard, and he had a fantastic season, ultimately, they want to keep the around years to come, so that Chris Milton get aged out in the and so fade him as well, but last but not least, I just think that these these ideas and fathers really show how volatile these are. Players on teams that want to get into play at best, maybe even help them in the playoffs, and you have these older squads, more experienced squads, fathers that really just can't stay support, or they're older and the team to make that transition to say, hey, we're going to go younger. So only the exciting thing about the other guy, who's first of all, who has different 